Before Abraham was, I am. Those are famous words that were quoted in the book of John, said by Jesus. And this is video that we're going to be reacting to, guys, is Amididat answering this question. So, like, why say that? Why say before Abraham was, I am? There's uh, the belief in uh, Christianity that this is Jesus claiming to be divine, like before Abraham existed. He existed. The term I am is Yahweh in Hebrew, and that is the name that God says is his name when Moses in the Old Testament asks God, what is your name? What should I say when the people ask me who sent me? It says, tell them I am sent you. So of course, this is an Amadidat video. I know some new information or some new angle is going to be brought to this topic that uh, is going to be, I think, pretty interesting and open up another discussion about this. So let's continue this episode of FCD Speaks and uh, I'll see you guys at the end of the video. We're going to watch it together and then I'm going to share my thoughts at the end. It's too close. It should be somewhere there. Okay, uh, now we'll begin with the, with the oral questions, please. Oh, sir, you claim that Jesus never said he was God. But uh, have you read John 8, 58? I'm sure you're familiar with that, where he took the name of God that was described in, uh, to Moses. When God said to Moses the name that he wanted to be called forever in generations, he said, I am who I am. Jesus in John 8, 58, when asked you know, who he was, he said, before Abraham was, I am. And then right after that, the Jews, the Pharisees, took up stones to stone him because he committed a blasphemy, claiming to be God Almighty. How do you answer that, sir? Yeah, how does he answer this? It's going to be interesting. Uh, shall I repeat my words? I said, nowhere did Jesus ever say, I am God. Nowhere did he say, worship me. That's English. I don't know whether the Americans understand the English the way I understand. I said, he said, no way did he say, I am God. No way did he say, worship Yeah, okay. Now, you quote me a verse. He didn't say, I am God, did he? He said, I am. He didn't say, I am God. I'm, let's, let's do the English, the language that I'm using. I hope we are... You remember at the beginning, I offered a prayer. You know, remove the impediment from my speech psychological barriers. You see, I'm thinking something, talking something, you're understanding something else. I said, where he said, I am God. Where he says, worship me, nothing. So you're quoting something else. I will respond. You see, I will not brush you off. I say, oh, this is of no consequence. No. He did say, they're asking him, he says, in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane. You see, they come looking for Jesus. And he's asking, whom seekers? Now, you people, who are you looking for? They say, Jesus. He says, I am he. I am he. Who? God. They were looking for God. No, he says, I am he. Who? Jesus, the one you're looking for. If some of your FBI or CIA fellow comes along looking for D-Dad, he says, who is D-Dad here? I said, I am. What, God? When I say, I am? No, he says, I am D-Dad. So now, if a person is looking for trouble, you see, when we're looking for faults, and the Jews were looking for trouble against Jesus, any excuse, every excuse, slightest something he says, they pick up stone, stone again to stone him. Why? Because they say, you claim such and such a thing. You blaspheme, you blaspheme. They were always continuously out to get him out, to catch him out, because they didn't like his preaching. Okay, they say, where are you, Jesus? Okay, Jesus is in the garden now. Is it normal for a person to say, before Abraham was, I am? Right. So, no, 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 right. That's that, that, right. Right. So, right. So, now, this word, I am, is from the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, Yahweh. No, 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 no. Moses goes to the mount. Yes, sir. And when he's commissioned to go and liberate his people, he says, he's asking God, he said, look, what shall I say? Who sent you? So he said, look, I am what I am. Eheye ashar eheye. In Hebrew, that's what he said. Eheye ashar eheye. Means I am whatever I am. He you know, says, don't bother about who sent you. I sent you. Go, man. What you asking me names? I am. Not I am whatever I am. Please, 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 please. You see, the questioner, I hope, will go and sit down. Because this is not a debate. You ask a question, I will answer. Please sit down. Please sit down. Let it in the front seat. There's a chair. 
sit down there. That's right. You ask the question, I will respond. You see, but this is a debate. And debate I had with Jimmy Swaggart. You see, we don't want to debate tonight. So, God tells Moses, go man, go. Eheye ashar eheye. I am what I am. What you bothered about who I am? Somebody comes along and says, look, move the mic from here to there. He says, who are you? Maybe he's in charge of this establishment. Say, look, don't bother about all that. You put that thing there. What? He says, who are you? I say, I am whatever I am. Do the job, man. So that word in the Greek translation is ho on. Ho on, I am. In Greek, your Septuagint, you know, your Greek scriptures of the Old Testament, the word there is ho on means I am. In the New Testament, the Greek word is ego eimi. Look, it's not the same word. Whatever it means in Hebrew or Greek, I don't know. But it's not the same word. Ho on, ego eimi. Then before Abraham was I am. I am before Abraham was. I am. I said, now how was he? Was he with God? I accept. He was with God. You see, he was with God. I say, you were also with God. I was also there. Jeremiah tells us, God tells Jeremiah, he says, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I made you a prophet to the nations before you went into your mother's womb. Jeremiah, you read that? Jeremiah, God says, I know you before you were in your mother's womb. I made you a prophet. How? What kind of a prophet is this? Before he goes in his mother's womb, he's a prophet. Was he with God? Of course he was with God. In other words, in the knowledge of God. Jeremiah was there. Jesus was there. Muhammad was there. Hitler was there. Regan was there. Everybody was there. You, me, everybody. In the knowledge of God. He knew long before, you know, the creation of Adam and Eve, that there will be a night, this guy Ahmad did that, you know, he will go and lecture, and you, my son, I don't know your name, but he said, you will come along, and you'll be the first questioner. He knew all that, oh. in his knowledge. But you were not there in this form. I was not there in this form. Jesus was not there in that form. In the knowledge, everything was there. That is the all-knowing God. Long beforehand, he knows everything. You see? So in that sense, Jesus was there with God, before Abraham was born in this world, before historically, chronologically, Abraham came on earth, Jesus was there. In his knowledge, in his plan, he had Jesus there. He had Muhammad there. He had Hitler there. He had Regan there. Can you see? Before Abraham was born, Regan was there, Didat was there, everybody was there. How? What form? Shape, size? No, no form, no shape, no size. Knowledge. His, his self-knowledge. He's omniscient. Do you say that? God Almighty is omniscient. He's all-knowing. If he's all-knowing, he knows. Everything, before and after. It is to us, before, now, and after. In the sight of God, there is no before, now, and after. It's all shh, an open book. That is our understanding of the expression. Why the Jews took exception? They were taking exception to everything. You see, in John, chapter 10, verse 30, you remember? They took up stones against to stone him. You know why? Because he said, I and my father are one. You read that context and you find it's a series of deliberate misunderstanding. See, when you're looking for trouble, you get it around the corner. You don't have to go very far. This is human beings. Every innocent expression you make, I can find fault with it. You know that? Like the word son, is my son. So what do you mean? You knew my mother? I said, no, no, son, I don't mean that. Said, you still call me a son? Hmm. You know, you can bash me on the jaw. Good point. It has happened to me. See, in my country, it is a country, you know, full of color separation, apartheid. I'm traveling in a bus, Pullman bus. I don't know if you have things like that here. From the north coast where I got married and I'm coming to Durban, you know, where I live and I work. After a weekend, I am returning. I'm sitting in the bus. And while this bus is passing now through Durban, the city where I live, and I can see that he's going to the central station, but it passes uh, Alice Street, where I work. So I walk up to the driver, and I ask him, excuse me, brother, does this bus stop anywhere near Alice Street? If so, then I can pull the string and nearer to, to get to work, instead of going to the station and then walking back two miles. If it is stopping anywhere near Alice Street, it's passing Alice Street, I know it's crossing it. 
So he said, no. Not like he barked, he said, no. I said, maybe sometimes, you know, we do speak with jokes, unintentionally. You know, I speak a bit too loud when I didn't mean it. You see? He said, no. So I go and sit back on my chair, seat. So he takes me to the central station. No alternative. By hydraulics, the doors are open. I get down, I'm still holding the rail, one leg on the ground, and the leg is the other one on the, still on the, on, the, on the platform. So he leaves his steering and he rushes to me. He says, don't you call me your brother. He says, call those coolies your brothers. So what happened? I'm stunned. I don't know what's going on. He says, don't you call me your brother. Call those coolies your brothers. I am counted as a coolie. Coolie means a laborer. You see, some of my people, they had gone to South Africa as laborers. So they divide the people into Africans. They call them kaffirs. Colored, colors are a mixture between black and white. They call them hot knots, hot and tots, bushmen. See? Me, I'm a coolie, whether Hindu, Muslim or Christian. So he says, don't you call me your brother, call those coolies your brothers. But I don't know what happened. You know, it's so sudden, I didn't mean anything. You know what he thought? He thought that I insinuated that my father had something to do with his mother. Is that what I mean when I say my brother, my son? No, he took it that way. And I'm stunned. If he had a gun, he would have shot me. By God, <laughs> fortunately, he didn't have one. So this is, if you're looking for trouble, innocent expression. He was a, a, a brother. I, did, I said, you still call me up my brother? You know, he could have punched me. You know that? So, mom, Mr. the word, retreat, honorable retreat. I did. However, the next question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I pray for you. Ahmadi Dad's approach, or his view, is the not so popular uh, approach uh, among those who believe the Bible and uh, follow particularly uh, regardless of uh, the branch of uh, Christianity, but Christianity in particular, I'm just using that as a, as a whole, uh, believe that passage when Jesus says before Abraham was, I am, that he's claiming to be divine because I am is the expression that is used when God says, I am that I am, or I am who I am, in some translations. So time and time again, we hear this conversation again and again about the divinity of Jesus, and it's uh, straightforward. Like, if Jesus is God, or was God, he, he would have just said it. Because when God is speaking, God is not ambiguous when he's talking about himself. He just says, I'm God, all-powerful. I'm God, all-knowing. I'm God creator, I'm God blank, blank, no one like me, there's no one beside me, I'm God. So there is ample opportunity for Jesus throughout the New Testament to say in plain language, I am God. And there, the debate continues that uh, Jesus implied that he was God or Jesus said, I am God in various different ways. And this is uh, one of the very strong uh, passages that is used in the debate to say Jesus is God because I am. Why would you say I am? Like, why not just say before Abraham was, I was in the knowledge of God or before Abraham was, God willed for me or before Abraham was, we all were there. You know, why not say say that or use language like that? So you can see there could be arguments made for both sides to this one. The Muslim is asking if Jesus is God, why didn't he just say it plainly? And Christians say if Jesus is not claiming to be God, why would he use this language? Why not just say something clearer you know so it's this back and forth that uh sometimes i find very amusing to be honest i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna sugarcoat that i i, I gotta laugh sometimes when i when i see it back and forth i'm like y'all still still arguing about this okay sometimes i think you just gotta agree to to disagree now ahmed did that his he, he makes a lot of sense in, in a lot of his arguments so it's uh he builds this very 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 strong argument you know and uh, i've shared it before in in my videos that uh and some people have mentioned in the comments they say oh Leroy, your view of jesus is similar to the the muslim belief of of jesus you know but either way you know everybody's going to be persuaded in their own mind everybody's going to believe what they believe everybody's going to believe what they're convinced of and convicted of so i you know what we can do as people is just share what we believe that's it you know share 
and establish a basis for why you believe what you believe and share that with somebody and then be open to hearing something else because maybe you'll learn something new that will expand your belief or just completely change your belief. Either way, it's not a bad thing. We're human beings here. We, we learn and we grow. Just because somebody is uh, Muslim or Christian or a scholar in any religion uh, doesn't mean they know everything or they have no more room to learn anything. And you know what, it's also so true, and Amandi that was talking about, uh, you know, growing up in his country of South Africa, they had a apartheid that, you know, the nation was sort of split, like the colors were divided. And, you know, that's not fair, you know, to live like that. And he's so right, when somebody is looking for trouble, they will find trouble. You can say the nicest thing to somebody. I remember one time I, I worked with uh, a female individual back in the day and something about her that day, she was just, I don't know how she did her hair and everything. I was like, wow, you look good, you know? And she was like, so I know I said, you look good today. And she said, what, so I didn't look good yesterday? And I'm like, just accept the compliment, bro. You know what I mean? Like you could say the nicest thing sometimes. And if somebody is just looking to, to argue with you or somebody is feeling insecure about something or, y y you know, whatever it is, they're feeling argumentative or they didn't, you know, wake up in a good mood, no matter what you say, they're going to find fault or find trouble in it. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's funny. I'm like, I'm complimenting her. Uh, you know, a genuine compliment from my heart. And it was, so I didn't look good yesterday. <laughs> she heard it as an insult. So <laughs> it, 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 it makes me laugh sometimes. So at Amandidad's point of Jesus, he's going around and just saying what he's saying, preaching, you know, uh, preaching just how uh, people can be really close to God. And he uses language like, oh, before Abraham was, I am. And then they're trying to stone him. Or he says, I and my father are one. They're trying to stone him. You know, he calls himself the son of God. You know, they're trying to stone him no matter what. Trying to stone him. He heals somebody trying to stone him, you know, accusing him. Oh, you heal somebody on the Sabbath. You know, they're just, we're just looking for trouble with Jesus. If you read the New Testament accounts in the Bible, you'll see in many occasions, Jesus, he would heal people. And they had an issue with that, you know, various different things. You talk to, to, to people, low lives of the society and, you know, help them, um, make them repent of their sins and everything, show them a, a new way to live and they hate Jesus for it. So it's like, no matter what his hands were tied, they're still going to find fault. And that, uh, I think was Amadidat's uh, point that he was trying to make. Not that Jesus was claiming to be God, but either way, guys, whatever you believe, I'll leave that up to you in this topic. But I definitely do want to hear your thoughts and comments down below about this video. Don't forget to leave a like if you did like this video and I'll see you guys in the next one later.